Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of Jack's Mailbag. Happy opening day, finally, right? It's been seven plus months since we've seen South Carolina baseball in action, but today is the day, and me personally, I am as excited as it gets. It's like Christmas for me. You know, baseball is my all time favorite sport. Grew up loving it. And anytime there's baseball on, I'm always tuned in. And with South Carolina, this is the year that I'm really excited for. My first uh, full year on the baseball beat, uh, working full time at Gamecock Central. And I couldn't be more stoked about it. So uh, South Carolina is in action later today against Miami, Ohio for the start of a three game series. And it should be a fun one. But without further ado, we're going to jump into uh, some questions here in a minute. But first off, if you have any questions you would like answered on next week's episode, episode four coming next week, we'll continue to do this every week. You can go ahead and drop a comment below on uh, this YouTube video, or at the beginning of next week, I will have a uh, post on the GC Insiders forum where you can leave a comment below uh, with your question. So without further ado, let's get into our first question from Carolina D., when can we expect any news on Becker's injury? So the question is referring to Matthew Becker. So if you don't know, over this past weekend, during one of South Carolina's scrimmages, I think on Saturday, uh, Matthew Becker, a left-handed pitcher in contention for a starting spot in the rotation, got hurt. Uh, one of our interns was there, and the way they described it was, uh, you know, he was pitching well, and then... As soon as he threw a pitch, he could feel some pain and um, looked visibly kind of upset. And Mark Kingston came out to the mound to check on him, and he and Becker came with him. So uh, it didn't look good in the moment. Um, I had some people, you know, texting me, kind of worrying about it, and um, I was able to get some in inside information on what kind of the real deal is. Um, and this is just straight from the source. Uh, so a doctor saw Becker and did an evaluation after he exited his start early on Saturday. Uh, both the team trainer and doctor believe it's an impingement in his shoulder where his humerus meets his rotator cuff with tightness and inflammation in the lateral muscle causing the pain. He apparently had some soreness going into the scrimmage, so he stopped once he felt more pain. And he was pitching pretty well, like I said before. Um, but we got more information from Kingston uh, during – Thursday's press conference where he met with the media uh, before the season began. And it sounded like he probably won't pitch this weekend, but it's not ruled. Like he didn't rule it out, but the way I heard it um, from, you know, talking to my source and stuff was that, um, you know, the thing is with his injury is it's a rest and recovery sort of deal. So with these things, you don't want to rush it back and, you know, re-aggravate the injury or make it any worse, right? You don't want to miss more time. So in order to miss as less amount of time as possible, the least amount of time possible, uh, the thing they're going to do is have Becker rest and um, just take it easy, and then he'll start throwing again soon here. So we don't have a timetable on when he'll be back. I mean, Kingston didn't rule it out for this weekend, but it, it, might, it might be smarter just to keep him on the shelf for this weekend to prevent any further injury. Next question comes from nine rushes, 18 yards. Who is going to be the biggest surprise good this year? You have a lot of options to pick from. Yesterday on uh, Foul Balls, if you haven't checked that, ep that episode out yet, it was our season two premiere uh, where Joe Machika and I, we you know previewed the season. And my the one of the questions Joe asked me was, who's my uns unsung hero? And my pick was Tyler Causey and... I'm going to stick with that. I think he's going to be a huge surprise this year. Um, and I'll give another option here in a second. But I think Tyler Causey is going to surprise a lot of people, right? I think, you know, most South Carolina fans probably don't know him too well. Obviously, he's an in-state in guy coming from Fort Mill, South Carolina, um, and then went to go play his baseball at UNC Chapel Hill. But this is his first year in South Carolina. Transfer, looking to make some noise before heading to the MLB draft after this year. And... He's impressed so far in scrimmages, right? He's like six foot six, tall, lanky dude, plays first base in competition with Gavin Costas right now. Um, and we'll see what happens uh, later today with uh, the starting lineup and all. But he's really wild, and Kingston's talked a lot about him and what he can do for this team. I, I, he's had a lot of good looking at bats. He can hit for a lot of power. 
And I think that's what we're going to see this year. I think we're going to see a a real threat in maybe the middle of the order, uh, hitting a lot of long balls for this team this year. So we'll see what happens. But as of right now, that'd be my pick. If I had to pick someone else other than what I said on the the, uh, the show yesterday, I would probably go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go like Parker Nolan. I think he's going to also be another guy that's kind of being slept on a little bit. I think the thing with him is he's starting at second base today. Kingston already confirmed that a few weeks ago. I think you could probably see him hitting in the two hole for this team. Um, he's a guy with a lot of experience, uh, plays in middle infield, like I said before, and he comes from Vanderbilt. So he played a few years there, had some success, and I think you're seeing a lot of good things with him. A lot of guys have really talked well about him as being one of the breakout guys for this team. Um, this up this upcoming season here. And um, yeah, I definitely expect that to carry over into the season. Flebus Jones asks, this is probably a dumb question, but when is the NCAA supposed to make a decision on the transfer shortstop that I believe is still in limbo? Do the NCAA people working these cases just not have a work ethic or maybe they are underpaid? Okay. Anyway, that, that's a long question, but I'll answer the first part of it. So the guy that uh, Flebus is referring to would be Jordan Carrion, who uh, is a two-time transfer coming from Florida originally, then transferred to Florida State, and now he's at South Carolina. Uh, and if you didn't know, um, uh, Carrion and Gavin Costas both played together at uh, the same high school. So that was the connection that led him to come to South Carolina. If you did not know that, it's a fun fact. So the more you know, right? Uh, but anyway... Um, this this whole thing has been very confusing, I think, from an outsider's perspective, and rightfully so. I mean, it, the rules are just kind of just, to put it bluntly, just kind of all over the place, and um, I guess it's kind of how the NCAA is. But with this two-time transfer rule, we haven't heard anything more yet. It seems like um, one, some, one of the other comments on the situation was that it's kind of like Tez Walker, who you don't know, had to sit out uh, some of UNC football season last year, and he's one, you know, a really solid receiver, um, kind of in the same situation. So I don't know when we're going to get an answer on this, but it seems like the longer it takes, the less likelihood Carry On's going to play this year. But I do remember Kingston saying, if it's not this year, he'll be back next year. Next question comes from Net Ghost. Hey, Jack, any news on who will be in the radio broadcast booth? Rip Tommy Moody. And it seems like his question was answered later on. But um, so obviously Tommy Moody passed away um, end of last year. He had been, um, you know, a legendary, legendary broadcasting, uh, you know, commentator um, for South Carolina baseball on the radio. And he had been doing that since 2000. And unfortunately, uh, rest his soul, he passed away in his sleep. And so it's a situation where you have to replace someone that is, you know, beloved in Columbia, right? You When you think of Tommy Moody, you think of all his awesome calls and stuff and, um, you know, everything that he had to do with South Carolina baseball, the attention to detail, that sort of thing. That's going to be truly missed. And I wish I got to know him. I wish I had a chance to talk to him. But, you know, from what I hear, I, I hear he's an amazing – he was an amazing guy and – uh Love baseball. So to answer the question, um, so Derek Scott is obviously going to be the play-by-play -play man again this year, uh, and he's doing double duty with baseball and uh, basketball. It's crossover season for everyone, it seems. Uh, and then Stuart Lake is going to be in the booth uh, this season as well. So it's hard, it's hard to replace Tommy Moody. It's literally actually impossible. Um, and I know Stuart said that in some interviews he's done, but – at the same time, I mean, you got the show goes on, right? And I think Stewart's going to do a very good job um, being the next guy up. So, yeah. Next question comes from USC Tom. Who are the starters this weekend? Also, why do we need a waiver if the court said you can transfer as much as you want? So, I, the second part of the question, your guess is as good as mine. Again, these transfer rules are just... They're very confusing, and, um, I mean, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we get a ruling soon on what the deal is with carry-on. But to answer the question, so the starting rotation this weekend is Eli Jones later today, Dylan SQ on Saturday, and then the long-awaited debut of Roman Kimball 
but was coming off Tommy John surgery, transferred here to South Carolina after the 2022 season. And he didn't pitch at all last year because of Tommy John. And he got it in the fall during his uh, his you know early stages of being at South Carolina. And now he's uh, now he's back this weekend. So we'll see what happens. But I think for South Carolina, this is a good looking rotation for opening weekend. Obviously, I thought Becker was probably going to be in the rotation before he got hurt. But at the same time, SQ is impressed. Kingston's been very high on him, high on him. Eli Jones, I always thought was going to be the Friday night guy. He just seemed like the perfect fit. And he's honestly been proving that in these scrimmages. And then Roman Kimball, you know, I've heard good things about the way he's been throwing. His pitch count's continuing to build up a little bit. His goal was to get up to about 65 pitches before opening day. And it seems like he's done that. So I wouldn't expect Roman to go a ton of pitches on uh, Sunday. He'll definitely be on a pitch count in the early going, similar to how Jack Mahoney was when he was coming off Tommy John last year. But, um, yeah, I think at most you could probably get four to five innings out of him, depending on how his uh, his pitches go. Next question comes from G.A. Cock. How has our defense up the center looked th- look this year? From catcher to center fielder and everywhere in between, what will rotation look like at catcher, shortstop, second base, and center field? So behind the plate is going to be Cole Messina, right? He's starting, uh, backing him up, probably Dalton Reeves. You could have Ryan Bakes uh, behind the plate, too. Uh, he's been catching some in these scrimmages. But honestly, I think he's going to be playing in the outfield for a little bit, right? Because you want to get his bat into the lineup, in my opinion. If I if I had to make a guess for today, I think he's starting on opening day. Ryan Bakes. Keep an, keep an eye on him this year. He's a freshman, but he is a very talented freshman, in my opinion. Um, and then at shortstop, Will Tippett, I think, is going to win that battle. We'll find out officially later today when the lineup comes out, like I said. But I think Will Tippett's going to win that battle over Lee Ellis, who has also been fighting for shortstop uh, since the fall. But honestly, I think Ellis is still going to get some time in there. I think he'll play a little bit of short this year and maybe some middle infield. I mean, we'll see what happens. And that second base, it's uh, Parker Nolan starting there with Tristan Salinas um, or potentially Jordan Carrion, you know, backing him up. And then the outfield, this is how I see the outfield kind of shaking out. Again, don't quote me on this, but it seems like Dylan Brewer is going to be in center field. Right field on a normal day would be Ethan Petrie. And then left field, you really – I think Blake Jackson – Blake Jackson's going to be in the lineup. Like, that just makes total sense. He's probably going to be leading off today. Um, But I think to get him in the lineup, put him in the outfield, right? Put him in left field and then either have, you know, Ryan Bakes or Kennedy Jones be that, uh, you know, fourth man for right now. Uh, And the reason I talk about Petrie um, with, you know, if it's a normal game, uh, Petri would normally be out in right field, but there is there is a chance that with Gavin Cassis and uh, Tyler Causey both apparently banged up a little bit, um, there's a chance maybe Petri plays first base today. Who knows? Uh, he was working there a little bit um, in the final scrimmage on Tuesday, so nothing's out of the question, uh, but we'll see what happens. Um, and then next question comes from West, West Ashley Gamecock. Tell me a little bit about SQ. Don't recall him from last year. So the question is referring to Dylan Eskew. And as I said before, Eskew was named the Saturday starter for this weekend. And uh, with him, he made a few appearances last year, didn't pitch particularly well. Um, and it was mainly actually only out of relief. So this is a big jump for him, right? You know, you're going from being a guy that was Juco product a few years ago to sparingly used reliever at best, I think, last year, right? And then this year, he's the number two starter in your weekend rotation. Huge jump. But like I said before, Mark Kingston has been very high on him, and I believe it. He has pitched very well in these scrimmages, very well right behind Eli Jones, uh, duking it out there. And I think the thing that also impresses me is the way he's been able to play defense. Uh, and he's, he's a very uh, good defender for his position, which – I don't think you t- you see very often. So we'll see what happens. But I think he's going to be a guy that pitch well early and his role will continue to grow. And I think you'll have more people kind of seeing why he earned such a spot in the starting rotation. Next question comes from Tomacock. I know in some prior years, the coverage for opening weekend baseball has been from one camera with no sound. 
Do you know if that will be the case this year or if it will be normal coverage? To be quite honest, I'm not sure exactly what the plan is this year. Based off of experience with covering early season games and such, there seems to be a non-conference play, especially with these SEC Network Plus type games. The one camera out in the outfield, and that's kind of your main camera. There might be an, another camera this year. I'm not exactly sure how it all works. Um, but once once we get to these like nationally televised games where it's you know South Carolina playing on SEC Network or something, or ACC Network, whatever the case might be, then there'll be more cameras for sure. And we won't have to really worry about this sort of thing. But I think probably in the early going in these uh, weekend uh, series, because you got to remember, everyone's in this situation, right? Right now, all these big-name teams that you know are playing these small schools that you've probably, for the most part, never heard of. So it's going to be like this everywhere, and South Carolina's not the only team going through it. So, uh, And then uh, next question comes from Sar. Defense up the middle is solid. Our catcher has a pop time of two seconds, and we have two players per position at shortstop, second base, center field, and catcher with equal talent at offense and defense. That about right? Go Gamecocks. And I think that is a good way to kind of wrap this up as we get ready for opening day here in a few hours. Yeah, I think this team straight up is – they're pretty good, right? I think they're not getting enough credit on the pitching side of things. I think their pitching staff has a lot to prove, and I think they're going to do it. I think that these guys that they're starting this weekend are going to show a lot of good signs, right? I think – Eli Jones is going to really step up and be that Friday night guy that this team sorely needs after losing so many veteran arms last year. And then you get Dylan Eskew. What's going to happen with him? Is his success from scrimmage just going to carry over? I think it will. And then in Roman Kimball. I've heard his stuff has been upper to mid-90s on his fastball. That is great. That's kind of what happens with Tommy John. You know, the elbow just for some reason allows you to throw a lot harder. And that's awesome. And then you get Matthew Becker back hopefully soon. And then we'll see. I think they have the depth to do it this year. And then with the hitting, we know they're going to score runs. Whether it's a lot of homers or small ball, I think we're going to get a good mixture of because you have guys that can steal bags and get over and score runs in multiple different ways. But don't forget, I mean, there's so much power on this team, right? I mean, I can name guys that might hit double-digit double digit homers this year. I mean, you might have six or seven guys that could potentially do that this year, which is a real good sign. So – We'll see what happens, but I'm excited for this year. I won't give any predictions as to where I think this team's going to end up, uh, whether it's Omaha or not. We'll see what happens, but I'm I'm looking forward to this year. I think it's going to be a fantastic season, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone at the ballpark. If uh, if you see me and recognize me, feel free to come up and say hi. I'm o I'm always welcome to talking. Uh, you know, Gamecock athletics, Gamecock baseball. You know, like I said before, I I absolutely love baseball. So. It's uh, always a good time chatting it up. But anyway, like I said before at the beginning of the show, if you have another question that you would like answered on next week's episode, feel free to drop it in the comment section below on this YouTube video, or be sure to look out for a post on the Gamecock Central Insiders Forum. If you're not a subscriber, please go ahead and do so. It is a fantastic way of communicating and uh, meeting new people that are Gamecock fans as well as well as getting some exclusive content. So without further ado, it is opening day and let's do it.